I don't know if you've been following the news, seeing these headlines lately, uh, but it's been absolutely hilarious to see. And if you look, I was in the mainstream media for a number of years, right? I was an anchor. <laughs> I was an anchor uh, on multiple news news channels across the country and spent the last 10 years of my career at the, on the mainstream media at the national network level at Fox News, right? So I've been in the belly of this. I understand how this works. And look, I had a news director one time. His name was Phil. Phil. Phil, if you're watching, screw you. Uh, so he... <laughs> He fired me because he, he, like, I wanted to have a fun morning show and he wanted to do If It Bleeds, It Leads. He just wanted murder, murder, murder. That was his thing uh, in Philadelphia. And so we didn't see eye to eye. He didn't renew my contract. He says, you know, we got to, the first thing we got to do in the show every day is just we've got to hit people over the head with the scary stories. That's literally what he said. So uh, it didn't work for me, right? And that's how the, the media operates fear tactics. Well, millions of Americans right now have been vaccinated, right? That's great news. It's working. But not if you listen to the mainstream media. Now that Trump isn't the headlines anymore, they need a way to make money, right? CNN needs a way to make money. They all need a way to make money. The, the, the newspaper subscriptions are down. They need a way for you to be scared, right? They need to scare you. That's their job. The media always needs a boogeyman. They need something to sell newspapers, to drive television rating, which are, are frankly in the toilet right now. Where's Trump when you need him, right? Oh, they, they, they're gonna, they can't wait till he comes back, right? So right now, what do they do? Well, here's a perfect example of exactly what they're doing. Uh, take a look at this. This is exactly what the mainstream media is doing right now and trying to scare you into thinking that vaccines don't work. Get it, or they forced you to get it because as Joe Biden himself explained, it was your patriotic duty to get it, to protect yourself and protect others. Good people do that. And the only way we can stop the spread of this virus and return to normal life is by taking the vaccines. If you get the shot, you can have hot dogs on the 4th of July. Remember when he told you that? So, you so yeah. So, uh, you know, this is what we need to be scared about now. So, so what is Tucker talking about? Well, he's running with statistics that aren't scary at all. Once you actually take an educated moment to understand them instead of scaring people. And the mainstream media is doing this across the board. NBC doing the exact same thing. Here's this uh, idiot reporter, Ken Delanian. Uh, he was a, a war reporter at one point who basically just regurgitated CIA talking points and warmongering for NBC News. And he said, uh, exclusive. At least 125,000 fully vaccinated Americans tested positive for COVID. <laughs> okay. Here's maybe a better way uh, of describing that. Uh, alternate headline, just 0.076% of vaccinated Americans have tested positive for COVID. That's what they do with these statistics. You know, I mean, he's a well-known moron for shoveling CIA and warmongering talking points for years. And now he's now out there fear-mongering COVID. I love that the idea, or how's it, how about this? Or here's another way you could have actually framed that headline, you moron. Full vaccination reduces your odds of getting COVID-19 by a factor of 70. And this doctor, a PhD, says, maybe this will help you. Here's another headline that would have worked. Among fully vaccinated, one in 1,300 people have tested positive for coronavirus since January. Among the rest, nearly one in 20 have tested positive for coronavirus, those that are unvaccinated. Vaccination makes you about 60 to 70 times less likely to get COVID-19. That would have been an option. That's a great headline. But they just didn't want to put that in the headline, right? They don't want to put these types of these types of things in the headline. That full vaccination reduces your odds of getting COVID-19 by a factor of 70. Would By the way, I got to ask you, anybody watching right now, if you would have, what, what are you more likely to click on? What are you more likely to click on? This, by this moron on NBC News, exclusive, at least 125,000 fully vaccinated Americans tested positive for COVID. Are you more likely to click on that because it'll scare you? Or are you more likely to click on this headline? Full vaccination reduces your odds of getting COVID-19 by a factor of 70, which is exactly what that article says. What are you more I click likely on to both. click on? I click on both to get you know information from both sides. Because I mean, I actually, I actually agree with what Tucker's saying. I, I feel like he was, he was saying, you know, he wasn't doing the same thing. He was talking about, you know, the fact that they said that if you're vaccinated, things would start to go back to normal, which is not true. So that I mean, I didn't hear him saying 
anything about the vaccines not working. I you just think he's... Shot. And now, surprise, surprise, they are demanding that even after you got the shot, you wear a mask again, even when you're outside. Now, what he's talking about, of course, is the CDC. But he's talking about the narrative that if you've gotten the vaccine... So that's where the CDC mess has come into play here. So you're getting this like CDC telling people now we're going to go back to full masks even if you're vaccinated, right? But of course, they've been all over telling you that maybe you shouldn't get the vaccine, you shouldn't listen to the government, right? So that's that's how that's how they've been playing this. That's how Fox has been playing this, right? Which is odd because there's two different people there at Fox basically saying two different things. On the one hand, Tucker's saying, you know, the White House has been telling you to go out and get vaccinated in order to protect yourself. And we now know that that's worked. It's working. And they've had record number of vaccinations as a result of what the Biden administration has done. Congrats to them for that. They screw up in a lot of other ways. But getting the focus on getting vaccines out to people, yes, they've done a good job of that. Anyone who right now wants to get vaccinated can get vaccinated. The people that are not getting vaccinated are choosing not to, and that's on them, right? But Jeanine Pirro has another way of looking at this. She doesn't think that she doesn't think the Biden administration has done a good job at all of getting people vaccinated. Now that's the problem. And now you want to mask us because you clearly failed in your effort to get us vaccinated because the totalitarian impulse within you is so strong. Nothing makes sense. <laughs> yeah, nothing makes sense. The fear mongering makes sense. So wait a minute. On the one hand, literally, Fox is telling us that you guys, that the Biden administration hit us over the head with getting vaccinated, which we did upwards of 70%, by the way, 70% vaccination right now, which is still a month behind where Biden wants us to be. That's a pretty friggin' good record, by the way, of getting vaccinated. If you're not vaccinated, it's your choice at this point. Anyone who's wanted to get one is getting one and has gotten one and is on the path to, to protecting themselves. So this idea from Janine that you, you've done a horrible job of getting us vaccinated, like that's not true at all, <laughs> at all. Hands down, an absolute lie. I love how Sagar put it over on the Breaking Points uh, show. He had this put to say, and I think he summed it up perfectly, this all this fear mongering around vaccinations and how these people are pretty much idiots. Tested positive for COVID. Oh my God, that's scary. 125,000 out of uh, how many? 145 million, 150 million Americans? It's one of these things where when you think about it statistically, you're like, wait, that's actually nothing. Also, how many of those people uh, got hospitalized and died? Oh, so you have a 99.999% chance of survival from any sort of breakthrough case if you're fully vaccinated, and you have a 99.996% chance of not being hospitalized? Oh, that sounds pretty good odds to me. Exactly. <laughs> but that's not how the, me the media wants to show it to you, right? They, in fact, want to take these statistics and run the opposite way with them which is total fear mongering. These people are basically trying to scare someone for no reason. The same thing happened at the Washington Post. Look at their headline. So the Washington Post headline is pretty hilarious. CDC study shows three fourths of people infected in Massachusetts COVID-19 outbreak were vaccinated. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Really? Okay. So uh, Matthew Gertz, a reporter says, uh, mm -hmm. do you think this math uh, do you think this is math ignorant journalists and editors, or are they trying to push a narrative? As the journalist writes, I 100% think this happens because journalists, like most people, often including myself, do not have a firm handle on statistical reasoning. Great point. I mean, if you actually start, like, look, you break it down like this, 77% of Vermonters are fully vaccinated compared to 43% of Alabamians. Of if breakthrough cases make up a higher percentage of Vermont's caseload, that doesn't mean the vaccine works better in Alabama. A responsible headline would say 99.93% of fully vaccinated Americans have not tested positive. The COVID vaccine works. But this is how the mainstream media plays it. And CNBC even regurgitated the NBC headline. Breakthrough COVID cases. At least 125,000 fully vaccinated Americans have tested positive. Hmm. But I love this. Carlos Quintanilla, 
uh, who's a CNBC anchor, actually crapped all over his network. Good for him. John Welch writes to him, hey, Carl, uh, Carl, this is such a misleading headline. I know you didn't write it, but man, CNBC should do better. From the article, this is less than 0.08% of vaccinated Americans. Carl writes back, I agree. The percentage should be included in the headline. Oh, interesting. Wow. Here's another doctor. Sorry, here, here's another uh, another uh, member of Congress. As a responding now to what the New York Times also went on to say. So the New York Times also had their own headline. Breaking. The Delta variant is as contagious as chickenpox and may be spread by vaccinated people as easily as the unvaccinated, an internal CDC report said. Okay. Here's the response to that. Vaccinated people do not transmit the virus at the same rate as unvaccinated people. And if you fail to include that context, you're doing it wrong. Here's another response to the, uh, the, 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 the New England cases. Please don't do this. Provincetown, Massachusetts, one of the highest vaccination rates in the country. As vaccina vaccination rates increase, the percentage of cases that are in vaccinated people necessarily increases. Imagine that, as Andrea says in our chat. This is god-awful, irresponsible trash by the Washington Post. Does no one at the paper understand how the internet works with headlines? Problem is, a lot of these people, you know, I worked in the mainstream media for so long, you know, you might have a story and you hand it to an editor, and unfortunately, the editor then puts in a headline that gets more clicks. And it's the complete opposite of what the story is actually about. I mean, you have these, I mean, you, you want to, like, you talk about in the newspapers, like, you know, they said, quote, CDC shows three-fourths of people infected in Massachusetts COVID-19 outbreak were vaccinated. Now, once again, they point to vaccination rates and even the cases without talking about hospitalization and death. All of those people in that Massachusetts story, none of them, none of them died. Four of them were hospitalized out of hundreds in these outbreak cases, breakout cases. And, you know, the New York Times taking it one step even further. When you literally had members of the White House calling out the New York Times for their, mis for their misinformation. And, you know, the New York Times has a long track record of, of spreading misinformation. Um, unbelievable. I'd be curious what, uh, what people think in our chat. What are you seeing in our chat on this? I mean, people are all over the place with it. And so am I. Like, I just, you know, I, I just feel like and know that the numbers have been, not been accurate from the beginning. And so, you know, it's like. Why is why are we not having the conversation of where this even came from in the first place? Still, like it's like the lab leak theory just got pushed aside now all of a sudden because if somebody did this like in a lab and now we're seeing a Delta variant, now we're seeing another variant coming out, Lambda or whatever it is, like these other variants are starting to come out. Like we don't know the source of the of these data of this data. Like it's all over the place. It's been all over the place on the CDC, the WHO. It's been all over the place from from the government. It's been all over the place from the news. So. It's like I can understand why people don't even know what the heck they're looking at as far as as, as information, because you have credible things like the CDC saying one thing, the government saying another, now the news saying another. So, you know, I just at this point have no idea what to believe. But, you know, I, I have sources that I've been listening to uh, that are, you know, virologists and scientists and all this other stuff that. I'm putting my faith in because they are actually, you know, they actually have their own studies that they have done uh, on this stuff. And a lot of these other people, they're just talking. I have no idea. They don't cite their studies. They don't cite anything. They just say it's like opinion. Well, and, you know, the, the problem is with a lot of these like sort of holistic remedies, when you talk about ivermectin or anything like that, there's no there's no studies on it. Right. Sadly. Well, you know, they haven't been funded. They don't. And by the way, because it's it's no one's going to make money off of it. Right. It's not right, run it's by a generic. It's a generic drug. Right. So no one no one's going to put up billions of dollars to do studies on these alternative forms. Right. Because but the thing is, like money off of it. Well, and, and, and money aside, the the NIH should have done research on that. They, there is plenty of data that scientists have done with ivermectin 
<clears throat> and they won't even look at the data, the NIH, like the data is that it's already been done, the, the, the research. And, and so, you know, the fact that they're ignoring that stuff just tells you like, like you, we always say, believe what they do, not what they say. If you see something that a doctor and a scientist over 200, like very credible scientists and doctors are saying ivermectin is something that is a very viable solution. If you take it, you won't get sick, et cetera, that it should at least be looked into, but they don't even let you know about it. They don't even look into it. Nothing because they don't make money on it. That is the well, only true. reason we're not hearing about it. True. But in this context of the mainstream media, right? In the mainstream, we, we, we now have the data on the vaccines that have, that have kept people from getting hospitalized. You know, that's, but that's, that's the I'm bottom saying. line. That's the data. That's the data we're being given. But, but where is that data coming from? You know what I mean? Like, like from the very beginning, the COVID tests themselves uh, were not accurate. I mean, when somebody somebody would go in and get swabbed twice, one time they're negative, one time they're positive. So I think these numbers have been all over the place from the beginning. Therefore, the, the therefore any data beyond that, you still have to question because where's it coming from? Like, like are they still doing the test the same way to where there's a bunch of false positives and we think there's more cases than there actually are? So we just don't know. Well... I mean, I, you know, that's the thing. It's like when I, I think the me, my biggest problem with this is the mainstream media, mainstream media spinning this in order to drive ratings, in order to make money off of clicks, in order to scare people about these breakout viruses and, and also run and the CDC met what, what the heck is this mask mandate BS that suddenly now the people who have vaccines, like rolling this out two weeks after you say that if you, if you got vaccinated, you don't need to wear a mask. So now they're mixed messaging. It's scaring people who haven't gotten a vaccine. We, I mean, we can hear from doctors at hospitals across the country and what they're seeing, the people that are coming into the emergency rooms right now in the ICUs who actually are sitting there who need this right now are because they didn't get a vaccine, who are on life support, they're on ventilators, et cetera, and who'd wish they had a vaccine ahead of time. And yes, these things aren't even FDA approved yet, right? And there's a push to try to get the Pfizer vaccine approved and try to get these things approved across the finish lines. They're emergency administered, being emergency administered right now. They're not even approved by the FDA. Like I took the J&J &J vaccine, one jab. My wife got the Pfizer vaccine, two jabs, right? Um, she had a little bit of a, like, she was a little sleepy like the next day, but that was about it. I had other friends who got it and they got like, you know, their arms swelled up. Um, but again, going back to what Glenn Greenwald said, it was never meant to keep, it was, it was meant to keep people from dying in the hospital. Those people who were going to be at risk, it was meant to keep those numbers down. It was never meant to totally prevent COVID. That was always the way it was from the start, but the, you know, but mainstream media wants to spin this now that these breakout cases click here to read about how, uh, you know, CDC study shows three fourths of people infected in Massachusetts were vaccinated. So click on these fear-mongering headlines to get more misinformation. You know, what about the people that died while also having a vaccine? Well, guess what? Those people, mostly people severely immunocompromised, have a lot of problems going on. And so most of them were elderly as well. They were already on the brink of comorbidities. Everyone knows that side of the story. But if people are supposed to not pay attention to those headlines and stuff, then... You know, like where where have people been getting their information all along? I would like to know in chat, like who is your source that you're listening to uh, to get all of this information from the very beginning? Like so when the outbreak happened and you get all the information, what has been your source for getting information? Because people are like saying, you know, oh, so you're saying that just because somebody says they're a scientist, they know yada, yada, yada. No, I'm not that naive, um, you know, but like there there are scientists that I've, that I listen to, there's a, a podcast called the dark, Hor dark horse podcast. This guy interviews a lot of people. Um, and, and they are very credible doctors and scientists and they have completely different data than you're hearing on the mainstream. So if you're listening to the mainstream, you're going to get whatever flavor, you know, they want to give you to, to fear monger and all that other stuff. And if that has been your source from the very beginning, then how come we, we believe the data that they had at that time? but not now. 
yeah, if you read, if you listen to the mainstream media, you'll get this, you know, from NBC, you'll get and this. And from the very beginning, like, how do we know that it wasn't sensationalized and hyper, you know, from the very beginning? Well, actually, to be honest with you, I mean, I'll, I'll push back on that. In January and February of 2020, they didn't do crap. The mainstream media was asleep. They weren't covering this story at all out of Wuhan, out of, they were like totally asleep. So now they're covered. Now they're really worried about it. But back in January and February of 2020, nothing, very little, very little on this. They'd much, they'd much rather talk about Trump. They were much more interested in Trump because that's how they were making their money and their clicks. And, you know, now I like, here's a New York Post. I think this to me sums it up in New York Post insanity. And by the way, this is a conservative newspaper. So maybe you should tell, maybe you should tell other people in the conservative circles, right? These squares equal 161 million vaxxed U.S. residents. Look at this little tiny red square. Of those, a tiny 5,601 caught breakthrough COVID and were hospitalized. And just 1,141 died, or 0.0007% in yellow. So why the panic? Why new mask mandates? Why no common sense? Great question. Because it drives numbers, it drives ratings to, to put out garbage like this from the New York Times is as contagious as chickenpox, maybe spread by vaccinated people as easily as unvaccinated. Or the Washington Post, three-fourths of people infected in Massachusetts were outbreak for vaccinated. That's your mainstream media. That's your mainstream media. So that's what bothers me the most. The media is essentially saying and building up, trying to build the case for a mask mandate and all of this by undermining the case for the vaccine itself. Stop listening to these idiots. Talk to your own doctor. You know, talk to your own doctor. I didn't go to, I didn't go to medical school for 13 years. I'm not in the ER watching people who come in who don't have the vaccine or literally on life support and in the ICU because their lungs stop working. That's not me. I haven't had that experience. So listen to medical professionals who've been there and watched it happen and seeing the fact that if they have been vaccinated, these people that have been protected as a result of it, and they're not going to the hospital. <laughs> you know, I mean, look at the people like Lindsey Graham, who just got a breakout case of it, right? Lindsey Graham, who's fully vaccinated senator. He got it, by the way, partying on Joe Manchin's boat. <laughs> Isn't that funny? So... He's partying with, uh, with a, a, a Democrat on uh, Joe Manchin's boat, on a boat party. He gets a, he gets a case of COVID and after he's already been fully vaccinated. And he comes out last night and says, I, you know, uh, the symptoms aren't bad. He's like, I, I, if I didn't get vaccinated, it would be far worse. And I'd probably be hospitalized as a result of it. That's Lindsey Graham, who at once was sort of pushing against these things in the beginning. Well, and the thing is, if you're saying listening to listen to medical professionals and all that stuff, well, there was a, a Senate hearing with a lot of medical professionals, one in particular, and nobody listened to them. And they have data showing about, about ivermectin. Like if, if you're going to listen to medical professionals, then we need to listen to medical professionals on both sides of the spectrum, not just the what what fits the narrative. And that's what ends up happening. What's happened here as is credible. Medical professionals and scientists have been silenced talking about one thing where the ones that that uh, talk about it in a positive light are highlighted. So so you can't get the alternative narrative so that you can do your own due diligence and, and get both sides of the story. So it's like, you, you, you know, when a, a good journalist will give you both sides. They will say this is what one side is saying. This is what the other side is saying. Now I'm going to go in and do my job and investigate and see which data comes out as the, the correct one, the one true, in the middle. True, but I also push back on that because, you know, the thing is, we can always, facts are facts. And so, you know, you can go and try to get both sides of a story. But if one side of the story is absolute garbage, and I witnessed this happen specifically at the New York Times, who went after, one, went after a narrative, went after a story, and felt the need to, quote, get the other side of the story, even though it was total garbage and they knew that. And then they put them on parallel in their story. And then they, eh, hands off, I don't get to, yeah. you know. Well, I agree if it's, I agree if it's garbage information. That's, that's different. But the, the, sci the stuff that's coming from these other scientists and stuff that counter what the mainstream narrative is right now is not, is not crap. Well, what is the mainstream? Here's my question then is like, 
which I'm trying to define this right now, which is what is the mainstream narrative? The mainstream narrative is that we better start masking up again. There's breakout cases and maybe these vaccines aren't as good as we thought they were. That's the scare tactic. That's exactly what they're doing. That's exactly the mainstream media narrative right now. And why are they? The point I'm trying to make is why are they doing it? They're doing it to make money. They're doing right. it to drive ratings, to get you to tune in to see how bad it's actually getting. They want you to keep tuning on into CNN and Fox. They want you to keep flipping on and seeing, oh, my God, this this Delta variant. We're really scared now. Oh, my God. And the truth of the matter is, is we now know we know that the data shows us like the New York, New York Post cover points out. This is what's going on. That but, it's a tiny percentage of people who get these breakout COVID cases and only a few of them are actually being hospitalized to the point of actually, and then beyond that, even dying. Do they cite that source though? Cause that number's all over the place too, depending on where you're, where you're listening, where you're reading like that, yeah, they that those source. numbers are all over the place. Yeah. It's right in the article. So, you know, just, it, it, you know, common sense is one thing, but pay, the, getting this information from the mainstream media is, is insanity. Like if you're listening to, you know, Janine Pirro at night to get your data, that that's when you need to really start, you know, getting your head checked. And now you want to mask us because you clearly failed in your effort to get us vaccinated because the totalitarian impulse within you is so strong. Nothing makes sense. <laughs> I, I've never liked her. Oh, my God. Nothing makes sense. Yeah. You're right about that. Thanks for subscribing to the channel. You can also become a channel member by going to morninginvest.com slash join, where you can stick it to the mainstream media and support independent journalism. We're able to bring you the stories that you won't see on any of the major billionaire-backed networks. Thanks so much. We'll see you next time, everyone.